All right, guys. So we have request for stabilization splint all done in Exocat. So stabilization splint's like an upper and lower splint that ties the mandible at a certain uh, certain position. Dr. Clark sent me the files, and he's curious on how to do this. So let me go ahead and um, first design a lower bite splint. And occlusal thickness I'll put at half. Peripheral thickness I'll put at half. Just go ahead and click antagonist here. And then We'll just call this, I think it's a digital impression. So <clears throat> let's load these files. I've never seen this case before. I'm not familiar with it. I don't know if it's been scanned at the proper OVD um, at the protruded position. I'm assuming it has been scanned at that proper position. I think I loaded those in backwards. Yep. Let me try that again. So I, I picked the lower, so I have to lower the lower the lower jaw first, which I think in the nomenclature of the way this scanner saved was called opposing, I bet. Yep. There we go. So you turn your model to where you could not have it be red, kind of looking straight down the insertion axis. And cool, he did scan it at the position that he wanted it to be scanned in, I assume, here. Nice job, Dr. Clark. Protruded position here. And so... It says, um, do you want to trim any of the model? I don't. So now it's picking the path of insertion. I'm going to pick just a slightly more facial path of insertion, maybe right about here. So I'm going to set from view. And then I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so it's creating a block out model where it's basically filling in a lot of the undercuts. This is where you can fine tune retention on a splint like this. For example, if you wanted to engage more undercut, you could just come in here and remove some of the block out. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I don't know how much retention Dr. Clark wants, but I'm gonna assume that default settings are fine. So then it, we have to draw our margin here. Again, without getting into politics of where you want your margin drawn on a bite splint, you could put it straight through the, kind of the middle of the tooth here, or you could come into these embrasure forms. Lots of different options here. And that's all personal preference that you could do. You could also, if you're worried about constricting airway space, you could actually leave the margin right here on the occlusal table so that you don't add thickness to the airway space and you have tongue space. Again, I'm not going to get into all that philosophy. This is more just a how do you design an upper and a lower pipe stabilization splint. Um, we do get into all that in our classes. So just clicking along here. Oops, let me undo that. Double click there. Gonna... That's probably fine right there. So the minimum thickness from the original was pretty thin. So we did get a little wonky, wonkiness there. 
you do not have to define this posterior area here, which you normally would do for like a flat plane splint, um, because we're doing a kind of a splint where we're combining the upper and the lower. So I could turn on my opposing here and see. And basically what you want to do is split the difference here. Um, so what I'm going to do is hit next. And I'm going to go to add, turn this all the way up. Let me smooth this a little bit right back here. That's a little wonky. Interesting. I wonder if I have a weird margin line there. Let me go to edit expert mode and I'm just going to drop back to bike slump bottom and actually it's maybe it's this one here. Yeah, let me see what we got. Might have went into some nether regions here. Yeah, it did. That should be better now. And I already know that seeing the way this is positioned here that I need some extra thickness. So I'm going to go to my occlusal thickness at two. Peripheral thickness I'll put at one and I'll hit apply here and see what that gives me. That's a good start. I could go back and edit this and I still don't know why I have that tumor there, but I think that's going to be easy to smooth now. So I'll go back to my wizard, smooth that little tumor there. And I'm going to hold my smooth flatten, smooth all this, some flat here. Let's see, because remember, we have to come up top here with the splint, so we don't want inadequate thickness to that top one back there on this side. Good, so now I'm gonna to go to my add remove and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some thickness here. Now I know a lot of people that do not like to actually tie the anterior teeth together and they leave air space. Hopefully the patient still has lip continence or where they're able to get their lips together. Again, looking at this, there's a few ways to do this here. So I'm just building up this so that we don't have so much to do up top when we go to that one. And then making sure we'll have enough room. Okay, so let's just say that that is good right there. Nice and smooth. And still a little tight in here. I'm holding shift to melt that back. Good. Let's just go ahead and hit next. Okay, so now we have a lower appliance designed. And so the way that you are going to do this is you're going to actually right click and hit save scene as. Uh, and I'll now call this lower. Plain STL. Use default coordinate system. Then I'm going to turn on the antagonist. I'll call this upper. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. I'll just save this. And let's see here. Let me exit out of here. And now I'm just gonna flip this. So I'll just I'll just make a new case here. Let 
we'll call this and now we'll go and click the upper and go to placement and then we'll do antagonist here just call that an antagonist okay and digital impression why not let's go back and design now and so basically what you're going to do now is bring in that other file did i hit design there we go she's a little slow today so stabilization splint it's asking me for the upper and then the lower okay so now what we're going to do is the same thing, set our path of insertion here. And <clears throat> let's see, don't need to crop anything. Um, I'm going to assume default settings on this. Um, yeah. I don't know what you like, Dr. Clark, so bear with me here. I'll let you be able to redo this as you want. If you want to add more block out in here, um, I'll show you how to do that under freeforming. We're going to have tons of block out on the distals of uh, distal buckles here based off of this angle you see. So it's not going to be super tight back there. In fact, I might actually come in here and add some thickness. Let me back up one second. And I might just add a little bit here, around here. There we go. Protect those bonded wire. Okay. Okay, so now we have to draw our margin. And again, this is totally user preference. Um, a lot of people keep the margin on a stabilization splint. Um, on the occlusal table to avoid airway constriction. I don't know um, what Dr. Clark likes, so I'm going to just do traditional stabilization here with a scalloped border. <clears throat> Oops, so I clicked down here by accident, I'm going to hit undo. So I'm coming down here. And again, on the buckle, some people like to go more at um, kind of the height of contour of the tooth. I, I think I saw one Dr. Clark did where he made them come all the way down to the tissue. So that's what I'm going to do, but um, I could be wrong on what he likes. And so what you do here now is just really quick. What's cool is now um, you have your thickness parameters here. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is you're going to turn on your previously designed splint. And that is a blunder of mine. Let me see what's going on here. This happens sometimes with the when you accidentally um, cut through a tooth like this in an open mesh. I'm going to have to drag that point and see, drag it out, if that helps this, maybe add another point. You have to be careful of that because you'll get an area that doesn't fit well. And it's still a little wonky. doesn't like this this is massive block out here and so that's why you're seeing it not meeting the minimum thickness so there's a few ways to get around that um, one is to drag this out onto the tissue a little bit and see if now it'll render this in <clears throat> because if you look at the block out model <clears throat> this whole area is floating with wax so there we go so now we have some coverage there so now I could come in here and I make my thickness uh, two and see if it intersects here with the opposing splint. 
because you're going to print these as one unit typically. Um, I think Dr. Clark's been like bonding them together or something. Yeah. So now we have these contact points here. And so now what I'm going to do is go to my smooth or my add remove, bump this all the way up. You're basically looking for zones of red and pink to be the areas at which these appliances will be perfectly fused together. And this is personal preference based off of how much surface area you want. And we're going to go back and smooth this later, but you can see here, some people like to keep a gap here. I, I personally do, but I <clears throat> some people like to close. The teeth can't move because they're splinted everywhere, but um, I usually leave a decent sized gap here so that if for some reason the patients subjectively feel like if there's an opening there, if there's somehow they could breathe through their mouth easier. It's more um, it's more subjective, but of course we want to discourage mouth breathing, but and try to encourage nasal breathing. But so I'm going to close this up because I think I think that's what Dr. Clark would want. So just turning this on here. There we go. Things. Red contacts, which means penetration of the meshes. Oh, okay. So then I'm just going to go to my smooth flatten. Okay. And I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. There you go. So then you're just going to hit um, next, and it's going to go ahead and cut this appliance. To the model. Let's see. Right now it's doing that. There you go. So when you look through, you don't want to see blue sticking through your tooth. And you also don't want to see the other guard, the opposing guard sticking through. So let me turn off my contacts. So there's a simple, super simple positioning device. And so what you do is you just um, save this whole thing like this, right click, save scene as, plain STL, let's get rid of that here. Let's just uh, we'll call this print, yeah. yes, yes. Let's see what that looks like in Mesh Mixer now. I'll show you, let's see desktop, stabilization, print. So this will print, typically uh, you print these ones. There we go. All fused together like that. Print them vertical like this. It supports all along here. It's like that on the build plate, not like this, because you don't want your supports all in here. So print these kind of kind of like this if you can. Um, Anyway, I hope that helps. Super easy to do. There's a lot of cool things you could do. You could cut a hole right here. You could add attachments. You could add, you could make these perfectly equilibrated. So if they're not squinted together, you could make them to where you have an upper and lower equilibrated together, but separate pieces. And then you could add attachments here to do your mandibular positioning. Um, but that's a talk for another time. Thanks, guys.